Good morning to you on this Saturday. We continue with Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, today from verse 14, John's fate recalled. When King Herod heard of it, for his name had become well known, and people were saying, John the Baptist has risen from the dead. And that is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others were saying he is Elijah, and others were saying he is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he kept saying, John, whom I beheaded, has risen. For Herod himself had sent and had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death and could not do so. For Herod was afraid of John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. And when he heard him, he was very perplexed, but he used to enjoy listening to him. A strategic day came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his lords and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. And when the daughter of Herodias herself came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you want, and I will give it to you. And he swore to her, Whatever you ask of me, I will give it to you up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately she came in a hurry to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And although the king was very sorry, yet because of his oaths and because of his dinner guests, he was unwilling to refuse her. Immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded him to bring back his head. And he went and had him beheaded in the prison, and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about this, they came and took away his body and laid it in a tomb. So here we read about the end of John the Baptist's earthly life. John the Baptist ended up in prison because he was speaking the truth in love. He told Herod off for taking his brother Philip's wife. And Herod had him put in prison, but Herod treated him quite well because, as we read, he was scared of John the Baptist and he knew deep in his heart that what he was doing was wrong. And he was perplexed by the teachings of John. But then when an opportune time came, Herodias, Herod's wife, found a way to get rid of John the Baptist. She hated him because of the fact that he told the truth. And we hear how John was beheaded. John's life on earth had ended. He had fulfilled his mission. His job was to prepare the way for Jesus. He had done that faithfully and well, and right up to the end, he continued to speak the truth. His life ended in a brutal way, but he now has eternal life in heaven. It was all part of God's plan. No matter how our life may end here on earth, be it through a natural death, be it through a violent death, be it through an accident, be it through persecution, We don't need to fear it because we know that death is simply the door through which we go into eternity. And as Jesus himself rose up from the dead, he will raise up us to a new life, a new body forever together with him. And we'll meet John the Baptist and all the other characters that we read about in the scriptures and all those who have gone before us believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life for all who believe in you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you made this possible by your death on the cross, that you made this possible by shedding your blood. We thank, bless, praise and worship you. We pray for that soul that doesn't understand this yet, that has not yet accepted you as Lord and Saviour, coming to you in repentance and seeking forgiveness of sin. Lord, we pray for the country in which we live in. We thank you for our Our country, we thank you for the freedom we enjoy here in Australia. We pray for those who maybe are not living free. We pray, Lord, for those who are suffering in the Ukraine. We pray for our government. We pray, Lord, that you would just help those who are in authority to make good and right decisions. We ask, Lord, that the enemy in the Ukraine be totally defeated. We pray that as we see a slow change in the opinions of some of his allies, that they would all turn against him and that he would just return home defeated and broken. Heavenly Father, we pray for your mercy upon those who are suffering. There was a bad train derailment in Greece, a crash when many lives were lost again. Many families are mourning. Lord God, 
we pray also for those who are still suffering the horrible effects of that earthquake in Turkey and Syria and there's fires and floods and all sorts of things going on around the world. We pray for those who are sick. We pray, Lord, for the dying. We pray for those who have operations uh, next week. We know a number of people who are having surgery next week. We pray that you would guide the hands of the surgeons. We thank you for modern medicine. We thank you, Lord, for our doctors and nurses and carers, surgeons, anaesthetists, and all who are involved. Lord, would you have mercy? We commit all to you. We surrender all to you. We lift up our loved ones before you. And now together we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you for tomorrow's sermon. Have a great weekend.